great to have you back with us for Derm2 Beating Coverage from the American Society of Dermatologic Surgery in Chicago. With us is Dr. Tina Alster, who practices in Washington, D.C., and has been educating all of us on so many topics over the years. And here she spoke specifically about microneedling. Right. Um, as luck would have it, instead of lasers, I've become now the microneedling queen, and in large part because that's what I do every day in addition to lasers and the injectables. So uh, I thought it was about time that we had a session that was devoted just to microneedling. So as always, I've always learned from your discussions about things, and one of the things a few months ago I saw you speak about was incorporating microneedling into your scar management. So for somebody who's published so much about scars, walk us through sort of your algorithm. Sure. Well, as we know, for many years, we've been using the pulsed dye laser at the five, either 585, but early on it was 577 nanometer, now it's 595 nanometer, pulsed dye laser to treat erythematous and hypertrophic scars. Now I'm using microneedling with the 595 nanometer pulsed dye laser for slightly erythematous um, hypertrophic scars, but ones that actually need a little bit more of a texture change, and you can combine the two together very nicely, which amplifies the clinical effect. So same day, same session, which one are you doing first? Uh, I first will use the 585 or 595 nanometer pulse dye laser followed immediately by one of the mechanical microneedling devices. Now I'm talking about one that does not have RF in it because there are different microneedling right. devices. I use the one without the RF. And what about incorporating topical steroid into the little channels for microneedling? Well, you know, that's uh, an area that I, I try to steer away from. And the reason for that is that many of the things that people are putting on the skin when they're microneedling isn't approved for intradermal use. If you are using something that is approved for intradermal use, like our uh, the intralesional yeah, catalog, intra I think that would be fine. I actually don't use it because I don't find it to be necessary. I think the pulse dye has already been shown to not only minimize the erythema, but also the symptoms like, like itching and burning. I I think that uh, addresses that, sta that stage of it that, that the steroid would probably do, and then the microneedling helps to amplify that effect. You could, however, put on uh, Triumph Cinelone. So we have patients every day who come in who f hear of microneedling, think that they're going to do a procedure with really minimal downtime. Patients are pink for a few hours, but mm -hmm. they really need like a laser resurfacing, a heavy either full field erbium resurfacing or fractional blade of CO2 or erbium. And that disconnect is a really difficult discussion because they need a procedure that has downtime. They want to do a bunch of small procedures. So where do you incorporate microneedling in your practice for people who might need a more significant procedure? Well, many people probably do need a bigger procedure, but in, in at least Washington, D.C., nobody wants to take the time to recuperate. So I often will have to do some of these smaller procedures, which do add up to almost equate with something like a fractionated ablative laser treatment. Um, so I will do the treatment that I just outlined, but I just do several of them. Um, and this is true for atrophic scars that you think are quite um, uh, uh, difficult to eradicate. I've actually used just regular microneedling without any exogenous substances and it helps to kind of reset that wound healing cascade and there's neocollagenesis that's been shown not just clinically but also um, in peer-reviewed journal articles mostly in the plastic literature. What's nice is that I put them all together in a review in this month's dermatologic surgery so if you want to know more about microneedling and what's been out there already and how I do it um, including treatment of scars and rarities, look at that article. So that's the October 27 issue? I think it's the October. Survey. I know it's online. I think it's in this month. I haven't seen the hard copy yet. I just know that it's out. Thank you so much for joining us, and it's great to have everyone with us for DermTube meeting coverage from the ASDS in Chicago.